Welcome. Thank you all for coming in. Um, just kind of as a frame of reference, have ever have any of you actually considered education or teaching as a potential career path? Cool. Yeah. Um, I would say when I was in high school, especially early high school, I would have done whatever I could do to get out of school. Um, I think there's this narrative somehow that teachers are the best students and I will say I am the worst student. If you ever see me at a faculty meeting or in a professional development, I'm usually the person standing in the back of the room like jumping back and forth and trying to contain my energy. Um, I'd much rather be outside. But so I was going to just share a little bit about my background and sort of where I came from because I'm not from Vermont, I'm not from Hardwick um, and I think that's a little bit different than a lot of the experience here. So um, I went to a really small middle school. I graduated with 60 people, so kind of similar to the size here. And then right after that, I jumped from this small private school into a massive public school. I graduated with 650 people, um, which was a really big transition. And it was great to be put in that there was a lot of opportunities, but at the same time, it was kind of a way for me to get lost in the larger picture of everything happening and it wasn't like I had a lot of people to connect with and I didn't have a lot of places and outlets um, to kind of explore myself so I found myself just kind of conforming and I don't think I had that language then to think about or talk about kind of what I was doing in high school but I was really just floating by and I was skating by like I was doing the bare minimum of academics and I was um, maybe like making some friends, but like social life was really my only value. And it's the thing that I thought was most important was like hanging out with friends, being outside of school, like disrupting class. That was, that was me. I was the worst student. Um, and I was really just skating by because it felt like this narrative have, had sort of been created for me and the expectation was already set of exactly what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to stay in Pittsburgh where all my family is. I guess I should have said I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I was supposed to stay in Pittsburgh. I was supposed to graduate high school, go to college, find a job that makes a lot of money and that there's job security. And then from there, I was supposed to find a husband and I was supposed to have babies and repeat the cycle. And it felt like my life, I don't think I had the language when I was in high school, but it felt like it, it was very defined, kind of the expectation of what I was supposed to do. Um, so when I was getting older and I was later in high school, um, I had a few teachers who really disrupted that and they kind of put their finger out like, is that really what you want to be doing? Is that what you value? And it was mostly social studies teachers, which is I think why I went and I studied um, history and secondary education, is they asked these really big imposing questions about like, who are you and what do you value? And like, what's your impact in this world going to be? Like, what do you want to do with your life? And up until my junior year of high school, I don't think anyone had asked me what I really wanted to do and who I wanted to be. And it was a question that I sort of stumbled with because that's a lot to ask a young person what you want to do for the rest of your life but it was the first time that I was actually thinking about myself and kind of my individual identity outside <coughs> of my family and kind of this normal narrative that had taken place of what you were supposed to do in a suburb of Pittsburgh Pennsylvania um, and I had a few teachers who really pushed me like you need to think about who you are and the world that you want to create. And I spent a lot of time on that question and I spent a lot of time exploring like, do I really want to wake up every day and go to a job that I'm complacent in and, you know, make, maybe make some more money. I think that's like, people think that you were supposed to do better than your parents financially or you're supposed to do better than them in some way. And that's kind of a narrative that's thrown around. but. For me, it wasn't doing better financially than my parents. It was doing better emotionally and being really sound in the person that I am and the kind of world that I want to live in. And I took time to really explore what that would mean. And my parents actually, they registered me for college. I didn't have a say in where I was going to college. 
which was really tough. Um, they sent me to the University of Pittsburgh. I didn't have a choice in it. And they actually, my dad signed me up to be a biology major. <laughs> and I had zero interest in studying biology. I had almost failed anatomy in high school and it was just not interesting to me. Um, and when I got to college, I was like, I think I wanna be a teacher. I think that I wanna work with young people. I think I wanna help them figure out what their role in the world should be, because I had people do that for me. Um, so essentially, my four years through high school, I spent time just really exploring like, how to answer that question and um, what my role in the world was, because I had never really been outside of Western Pennsylvania. Um, the first time that I sort of broke that mold and I got to see the bigger picture, maybe kind of a light different than what I had seen my whole life, was I got a scholarship to study abroad when I was in college, um, the Vira Hines Women in Global Leadership Scholarship. And essentially, I was given a large sum of money to um, expand my worldview and think about my role, not just in my small community, but in the globe. Like, what's your identity and really what is the purpose and role that you're serving? And I didn't have the answer to that question, even as a junior in college. Um, I had taken a lot of classes that had, they were interesting enough, but you know, they were more classes. And sometimes I got to do some things that I was interested in. I studied music a little bit, um, but this scholarship, essentially the first time I was ever on an airplane, the first time that I ever traveled outside of my community was a 12 hour flight to Cape Town. Um, and actually I think we went first to Johannesburg, but, um, I spent essentially a month there exploring education and what education looks like in different countries that don't have the same, um, income and wealth that the United States does. And I studied, um, disparity in South African society. Um, and that was a really big opener for the type of teacher I wanted to be and how I wanted to teach. Um, yeah, and college was this time to just sort of figure out for the first time who I wanted to be and um, like why I have the value system that I do. That it wasn't necessarily like my parents' values or my family's values. It was me really exploring why I think I have those values. Um, and it really shifted and changed a lot of perspective for me. Um, from college, I took a two year hiatus. I didn't graduate right away. Um, I finished my history degree in my political science minor and I sort of paused where I was at and I worked for the National Education Association for two years. Um, I essentially lived in Washington, D.C. as a home base, and I traveled the country. Um, I had gone from being on a plane once to being on a plane three times a week. Um, I traveled the country talking to aspiring future educators about um, the career path that they were taking and how we can prepare ourselves to enter the field, but also how we can bring students into the conversation of thinking about how to be teachers and why to be teachers. Um, and that was really rewarding work, but it was really hard. And I didn't really develop any roots or develop any community um, right out of my transition from college. Um, so then last August, I went home to Pittsburgh. I finished my student teaching. I graduated with my bachelor's of science in education, my bachelor's of arts in history, and a minor in political science. Um, and from there, I actually moved to Frankfort, Kentucky. Uh, weirdly enough, from Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, I was, I was actually, um, my partner and I had been two years in a long distance relationship and um, he's my person and he's also an educator and I, I really value his view of the world. And um, when I graduated in December, there was no jobs lined up for me in Pittsburgh and I sort of said, I'll try to live in the South, why not? So um, I moved in December and by January I realized I don't wanna be in the South anymore. <laughs> and uh, we essentially decided uh, to move to Vermont. We saw this really great thing in education happening that students have a say in what they're learning 
how they're learning it, that there's different pathways to them graduating. Um, and there's a lot of really good things happening in the Vermont education system. So I essentially worked my tail off um, as a substitute teacher and um, working as a waitress. People aren't gonna tell you, but you'll work, if, you're, if you go to college and right out of college, student loans add up and sometimes you just have to work a job that your whole heart isn't in, but it gets you to this longer picture. Um, you just sort of have to grin and bear it. Literally. <laughs> um, but come June, we moved to Vermont uh, without a place to stay and without jobs and uh, kind of stumbled my way into here at Hazen and into this role as a librarian. But I'm so, work I'm so enjoying like working, getting to know all of the students here and learning from a lot of expert faculty and staff here. Um, this is my first year teaching and I'll say the biggest piece as I reflect in the last seven or eight years as I've transitioned from kind of where a lot of you are at to where I am now is you continue to develop this identity and this realization of kind of who you are and who you want to be and um, you go through a lot of transitions of friends and family and kind of value systems that you think are really important to you kind of flux in and out of your life um, and then you sort of just realize one day you're where you are and it's like exactly where you're supposed to be. And you have this opportunity to, I don't know, like make an impact on the world and have conversations with really interesting, important people. It's a little bit where uh, I am today. And I'm just uh, learning to be kind of present and mindful of myself and kind of the larger world around me. Yeah. <laughs> so um, probably you have questions more specifically about education, but I don't know. Um, what do you all want to know about like becoming a teacher in the process of it? I'll start us off with a question. It's not really about education, but it's about attitude. Um, I find you to be a, to be a colleague who, who, who always seems to have a good attitude, is approachable, and has a positive energy. And, you know, I know showing up with a positive energy, a positive attitude isn't something that, um, that, that always happens because of the circumstances of our life. It's something mm. that we just, that we find within us. Could you talk about that for, yeah. for a minute about your, like, your, Attitude about attitude. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's a, such a great question, Jen. Um, I think a lot of kind of my philosophy of life that, again, you, you develop over a long period of time, um, it comes back to empathy really at the core of it. And I was reflecting with my partner actually about what I was going to talk with you all about. Um, and so much of why I got into education is really like I see humans and how we interact as really like the potential to change our world in a positive direction and I think so many educators see our students as a space and a platform to do that um, and I'm not going to say I'm always positive because I think everyone has their moments and has their days but um, a really a, a philosopher I really value and that has shaped a lot of my philosophy in education um, David Foster Wallace he started this speech at, um, I think it was Kenyon College in 2005. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a, a graduation speech. He was the commencement speaker, I think. And he essentially started the conversation that um, there's two fish swimming through water and um, they're swimming by and eventually they pass another fish. And he says, hey folks, how's the water? And the fish are continuing to swim along and one turns to the other and they say, what the hell is water? And he goes on in this speech to talk about like water is your everyday life and just working through the ins and outs and the moments of, you know, for you all probably passing period seems like one of those really mindless moments and mindless times that maybe you see a friend or two or you say like hello, but for the most part it's just sort of something that happens in your life as you're getting to like the next class or you're getting to the next big goal that you're trying to do. Um, and 
what he was talking about during this commencement speech was really learning to be present and learning to like live in those moments because at the end of the day like your whole life is water right like those fish are swimming in water every day and for them to not be able to recognize what water is around them like that's your life that's what's happening and I spent a lot of time really working with David Foster some of David Foster's Wallace's work um, and really exploring like am I being present in my life or am I allowing it to like pass me by and just sort of consuming it as it comes at me. Um, and I spent some really intentional time reflecting on um, how to be mindful and present and really live like this moment that comes and goes and is very passing. Um, I've been trying and I'm still trying to learn um, how to be present and kind of take ownership of life, of water. <laughs> I think it's easy to get really bogged down in um, bigger picture stuff that feels very weighted and feels kind of heavy out of our control, but ultimately the control that we have is over our life, how we treat others, how we communicate with the world around us, um, and taking hold of that ownership has really helped me identify who I am. Questions. We have a lot of students in here who have participated in educational um, uh, internships and other activities. What kind of questions do you guys have about the field or about Ashley? Yeah, um, do you like see yourself going on to like, actually be like a history teacher, like sometime in the near future, either here or there in school or not? Yeah, I really hope that there's a position for me to be a social studies teacher here at Hazen. Um, I think that by studying history it's so there's there's a history of everything right like there's literally a history of school lunches might not be the most interesting thing to learn about for us right now at this moment but like there's a history of science and there's a history of education and there's a history of actually i was just learning like history of leggings and uh athleta wear like why it's so normal in our society now um and I think it's so interesting to study the stories of past and present humans and what brings us to where we are today um, and helping, it like again comes back to that question of what impact you wanna have on the world. I think that studying each other and studying history of humans, um, I think it's really an opportunity for like you all to explore kind of your role in that long trajectory of time like you're just a drop in the bucket right but how are you going to take ownership of that drop that you have Maybe I have a question for you all. If you had the opportunity, like in your learning, to study something in depth, it could be anything. For me right now, it's like wild plants and herbs. I'm really interested in learning about wild plants and herbs. If you could have like one thing that you spent part of your day just exploring, does anyone want to share what that would be about? Yeah, Haley. Why French? Because I want to study abroad in France. Okay, so you want to study abroad and studying the language will help you get there? Okay. Yeah, Kara. Uh, geology. Why ge geology? That's so interesting. Why? Um, I have a love of rocks, so any chance I can get from the rock store and looking to buy rocks. <laughs> Okay, do you have a particularly favorite rock? No. <laughs> no. Is Mr. Considine going to uh, the Southwest this year with his students? You should ask him. 
Like to the, like in the Southwest? Yeah, they went to, I think, um, Zion region. Oh, yeah. Every, every two years, I think it goes. Mm -hmm. Wow. It'd be a great place to study geology. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm kind of torn between two things. I um, always have a little bit of regret that I didn't study linguistics when I was in college because I think that the the foundation of the evolution of language, how it's developed all over the world, is fascinating. Um, but I also am kind of into plant breeding, like breeding new types of flowers, because I think it's cool that you can even do that. Um, that might be a little more achievable in this landscape. So that's, those are the two things I'm thinking about. Hillary, when you were, when you were like this age, did you see yourself being interested in either of those things? Throw me under the bus, huh? <laughs> um, no. I hated school. It was terrible. I just wished every moment of every day that I could be out of that box. So no, I did not think about these things. But I did love being in the woods and finding wildflowers. I don't know if you guys ever walk in the woods in the springtime, mm. but there was this really small period of like a week and a half, right as the snow is melting, when the moss is coming out, that there's a handful of really kind of, they're called spring ephemerals, because they're just, they, they're there and then they're gone, spring ephemeral flowers. Um, I'm sure there's tons in the woods back here, and I remember getting out of school every day and just like heading to the woods to find some sort of peace after my eight hours in a chair. Hmm. Did you think you were going to be a teacher? <clears throat> nope. I didn't know what I wanted to be for a long time. Still don't I, know. I, I was going to say, I, I still don't think I know what I want to be. Never, you're, never, you're never certain. <laughs> I would say that. Yeah. Yeah. Jen? Uh, the other path I would have taken would have been uh, art and design, graphic design, web design, marketing. It's, and I've taken some classes to kind of learn a little bit about all that, but it, it always fascinates me. And, and I have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. I'll say one, one kind of last thought. Um, as I've become more distant from my formal education process, both moving through high school itself and then in my formal higher education, um, I've come back around to really appreciate the process of learning. When it was, when it was someone telling me what to learn or how to learn, that felt like an authority figure telling me what to do and all I wanted to do was like literally run out the other door. Um, but as I've kind of reclaimed my learning and I've reclaimed kind of how I learn, um, the process of like, for example, this summer, I just, I wanted to learn how to ferment things and I just started making kimchi and sauerkraut and kombucha, which I forgot on my counter I really wanted to share with you all. I apologize. I'll have some on Monday if you'd like any. Um, but I just started reading books and I just started kind of watching videos and learning from people who are experts and already doing it. Um, and it's really given me affinity to remember the process of learning and why it's so valuable. Um, so even if you're not feeling that passionate about something right now, um, the practice of learning and studying is something that you'll always live with and I think you can always grow. Yeah. With that, just like, let's leave the day on the note. Like, what kind of world do you want to create? What type of world do you want to live in and be a part of? Thank you all for being a part of this space. Thank you for yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs>